and slowly open the eyes. Being here, I discover that I'm very afraid of others' judgments towards me, and I what do you how to move through that, go beyond. You know, one of the biggest fears humans have is not being approved of, be it for our partners, our families, our society. And it's because of this fear we start to abandon ourselves. And we start to put on masks that we think are appropriate for different situations. And we have such a collection of masks that we actually lose sight of who we are, our true essence, our internal love, our internal power. And we put all our expectations on the approval of the outside. Because since we're children, we're taught that security and love is out here. Now, this is very fragile. Why? Because it's constantly changing. And there's a million different opinions and ideas. So we start lying. We start pretending. We start getting anxious. We're afraid to speak our truth. We're afraid to show our truth. And we get to such a point that it affects us emotionally, physically. It affects every aspect of our lives. And this balancing act externally is so exhausting that we're up to here with stress. And then at some point, we have a realization. I can't do this anymore. I just can't do it anymore. I can't be afraid of losing someone. I can't keep pretending to be that which I'm not. In fact, I don't even know what I am. Just what I've been told. I did everything I was meant to do. Or everything I wasn't meant to do. But irrespective, I'm not happy. And it all comes from that point. We don't know who we are. But there's this voice that's always calling us home to our heart. You know, who am I? What is all this for? Why do I feel like this? Why am I not happy? Why do I not feel good enough? And we ignore this for a long time, no? We have our addictions. Our heads are chasing after attachments. Or drinking, or drugs, or working, 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 working. Shopping, 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 shopping. Chatting, chatting, chatting. And we start to see, to be with me is so difficult. I can't be silent. I can't be at peace. I just don't get anything. And that's a good moment. That's the best moment. Because that's when you decide to change. And this internal voice is always there. It's always there, calling us home. And we start to find this internal power, this peace, this love, this consciousness. And it's like, oh, even when we just touch it for a second, oh, that's it. We know that's it. So we start focusing on it more. And it starts to grow. And the beautiful thing about consciousness, it pushes you to speak the truth. It pushes you 
to not abandon yourself. It pushes you to take off your masks. It pushes you to be real. And the more it grows, the more you move all the stress and the emotions and the rubbish, it's like a force and you start to change. This becomes more important than that. The juggling game. And when we start to realise that, there's such a deep sense of being. And we start to love this person. We stopped judging this person. And as a consequence, we start to see ourselves everywhere. Because everyone's having the same struggle. It's not that people are good or bad. They're just consequences of life. And we start to see that. And I'm not condoning certain aspects. But we start to see, oh, I do that. Oh, I'm like that. Oh, I hid that. Oh, I used to lie. Oh, I used to cheat. Oh, I used to do... Pa, 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 pa. Oh, I have that anger. I have that jealousy. I have that insecurity. I am that. And that's when you start to experience compassion. Compassion for yourself, which is power, no? It's not pity. It's compassion. It's empowering. And it empowers others. And all of that's the consequence of the expansion of consciousness. So, yes, it will stop. But you have to cultivate something bigger. And that's love consciousness for self. And then you give that externally. Hmm? My question is, how to handle irresponsibility of people that they don't accomplish their word, they promise and they don't do it, and you, yes. What other people do defines them. It doesn't define you. And you can't change other people. You know, we have this expectation of people telling the truth. And we have this expectation of justice. And it's the greatest illusion because it doesn't exist. It's just an idea. So all I can do is trust in myself. And when I trust in myself, I'm already empowered. And the interesting thing is, when you're very present and you trust in yourself completely, you know who you can trust in. And that's important because that's your responsibility. Often we want to believe something and then we get hurt because it doesn't become a fact. But we knew all along. You know, people lie to me all the time. I can tell. The energy changes. I'm like, mm. <laughs> For me, it's easy. You can be in the telephone. You can be in the chat. But does it matter? No, because that's not me. That's defining them. And they have fears, and they have problems, and they have need to please. But that's their responsibility. You cannot change other people. You can only change yourself. Yes? You're welcome. It's true. <coughs> My question... 
yesterday, after I talked with you, came up. So, I started thinking that I always have love to give to another people, approval for another people. And I never have love for myself. I'm never enough for me. And when I try to have that love for myself, I always feel selfish. I always feel that it's selfish and not love. So I don't know what is the limit, what is the line for with love for self or the selfishness. And always I'm afraid to cross that line. <coughs> how to feel enough for myself and to love myself without feeling that that is selfishness. Okay, so Jesus said something, no? Do unto others as you do to yourself. And unfortunately we all do. Because we're so violent with ourselves. We're so judgmental. And we do it externally as well. Okay, so we have to learn to love ourselves. How? We have to heal. We are the source of love. And we have to give love. But we have to have love to give. You know, if you're just full of abandonment, resentment running around giving to everyone, losing your life, not appreciating yourself, what love are you giving? You're giving conditional love. So conditional love always has a vuelta, no? And that is, what do I get in return? And that's where the victim comes from. Now, when I love myself completely through the expansion of consciousness, I give from a place of abundance. And that abundance has no limit. In fact, that abundance doesn't even notice it's giving. It's automatic. It's natural. And it doesn't look a certain way. Sometimes love says no. It doesn't always do this. Oh, yes, 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 of course, whatever you want, to, I'm here for you. It's not like that. Love is powerful. It has a clarity. It sees what serves. But it all starts with self. And as you said, nothing I do is ever good enough. But I bet you're much more forgiving with other people. Yeah, because you're taught that. But we're violent with ourselves. And at some point, that happens externally too. Yeah, so it's just about expanding consciousness, letting go of the rubbish. You don't become selfish. In fact, you become the exact opposite. You become abundant and unconditional and empowered. So we really got everything a bit confused. Hmm? I have a question. There are some moments where I feel less or smaller than others. I know that I see it's related with the trust in myself. So I want to know how can strengthen the trust or you what know, to do. To trust is just to move. Like you have you have to let go of this idea you can make a mistake. Because it's impossible. Everything's an experience. How do you become a master at something? Like if you want to be a master of the piano, do you just pop out like that? I'm Liberace. Woo! No. What do you do? 
You play, you practice, you play, you practice, you get a teacher, you practice. And life's like that. It's a process of experiences that take you through to a point of mastery. But in order to move in that direction, you have to move. You know, lots of people just don't do anything because they're afraid they're going to fail. And it's impossible. You have to have lots of experiences. You know, when I first started writing books, they were so bad, so bad, so bad, so bad, so bad. bad. Like, oh, oh, and you know, but my mother's an English literature teacher. And... And I'm, you know, very good at English. And my books were absolute. <laughs> so what did I do? I got someone else to write them, obviously. You know? <laughs> but I kept doing it with help until it was good, no? I kept it. It took a lot. And when I started singing... And I'm not a great singer. But I trained for six years, four days a week. You know, and when I first started, I can't even imagine. Okay, so it's like life's like that. You have to do it. And that's the joy of life. You know, you're discovering yourself. You're seeing what works and what doesn't work. And that's trusting in yourself. That's trusting in yourself. The easiest thing is consciousness. Because it's there. And the master's within. And without. If you focus, if you go in, it all comes. It's the easiest thing because you are born with that. But everything illusionary, you have to. You might have a talent, but you still have to refine it. And that's the beauty. The learning process, the evolution. Hmm? So if we don't do anything because we're afraid of failing... We've already failed. Hmm? And let go of the expectation. No, be the best of you. You know, not everyone's Lady Gaga. You know, they're not everyone. But be the best of you. And it's so rewarding. Hmm? Yeah, good. What can you tell about... The energies of people, the envies and you know, all those things. All of these things are superstitions. Okay, you can sit down now. Because you have to trust in you. And just if you've got good news, celebrate it. You don't have to hide it in case someone's jealous. You have to enjoy every moment. Now, I'm going to explain to you about energy, so you just listen, okay? Everything is love. Now, that sounds weird, no? It's all the same energy. Everything's made of the same energy. Unconditional love. Now, we have dense energies, which are the very low vibrations. Violence, corruption, da 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 everything that's down here. And then we have the other extreme, the divinity, the, the other energies. And most of us live in the middle energy. Okay, and the more we focus on our energy... We attract that energy. But if we're always worrying that these things are going to happen, 
what sort of energies are we attracting? The lower, yeah, so you need to just enjoy and focus on expanding your energy. And that doesn't think, mean that bad things don't happen. But you can't be thinking about them. And if you are high, focused in a high vibration, even the worst things that happen, you can use for greater good. Okay, so it's very important not to worry about these things and superstitions and hiding chickens under the bed and, <laughs> you know, all those things they do, no? Yeah. <laughs> no, Australia, we, we hide kangaroos under the bed. <laughs> I just saw or noticed that I identified too much with my work as if I am those achievements. If Pamela doesn't, doesn't succeed, she is not worth it. So now I wonder if I'm not that, what else I'm not, and what, yes, I am. Okay, that's a good moment, huh? Because I realized. Because I was a real overachiever, no? Okay. And because I didn't think I had any worth. I was always trying to prove myself. Look, I'm good. Look, I'm successful. Look, I'm the best. Look, 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 look. And when I realised that, everything changed. That's when I started to go in. And I started to find something much bigger. And that was love. And that's all I wanted. I guess, on some level, your success represents love. I am worthy of love. But you are the love. That's what you have to remember. And you can keep being successful. More successful, but not with attachment. Because when there's an attachment, when you fail, what you call failing, you suffer, no? And you don't feel good enough. But when you love yourself and things don't go exactly as you want, you still love yourself. Yeah? Everything has to start from that point. Unconditional love. And it's from that point, that base, we can build pyramids, but bigger than ever. Because that base is unshakable. It's unshakable. It's infallible. It's permanent. It's anchored in reality. And you need a base because you're very tall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need a good base. I would like to know when you say that there is nothing bad with us, nothing to fix. I can see that when I discover things, I want to fix them immediately. Ah, I saw where it's coming from. Okay, let's fix it. And always when you say there is nothing to fix, it just short circuit. Okay, I'm going to explain. You're perfect exactly as you are. But you are evolving, no? So as you evolve, you can become more. More love. That's all. But that you do lovingly. Like if you see something that causes you to suffer, you can polish that. Or no. 
but you don't do it like like there's something wrong that has to be fixed. It's just something that can evolve more. But from a place of perfection. You're too literal. You know, everything's factual and structured. And that's not you being loving. Okay, if you see some aspect and you say, oh, that makes me suffer, I let it go. But with love. And if it comes back, you go, oh, I'm doing that again. Oh, I let it go. Not, oh, I'm doing that again. Why am I? This is what you do. Do you see? And you don't need to be like that because you're great. And you've got to see that. But you're always doubting it. That's why you ask me all the... Because you're anxious that you're not good enough and you're more than good enough. You're amazing. When are you going to see that? Now. That's the right answer. I'll try again. When are you going to see that? Now. Yes. You know, that works to a point because you go fast, no? And then it gets to a point that that exigence is, is the problem. Hmm? Come visit our webpage for books, movies and our wonderful retreat centres. Isha's simple yet powerful system is transforming lives around the world.